Good evening, you're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. The Vice President bats for unity among all religions for a plural society, also asserts India's commitment to protecting rights of religious minorities. Prime Minister Narendra Modi releases the country's first national disaster management plan, plan based on UN Sendai framework, spells out role of government even at the grassroots. To boost production and check price rise, the government increases MSP of paddy and pulses for the 2016-17 curry season. Clamour for Rahul Gandhi as Congress President grows, elevation likely by the end of this month. And Iraqi forces make advances into Fallujah despite resistance from the Islamic State, but concern rises over an estimated 20,000 children caught in the crossfire. Our top story this evening, Vice President Mohammad Habib Ansari has batted for unity among all religions, saying it is the existential reality of a plural society. Speaking at a Moroccan university, the Vice President said religious unity was the basis on which a democratic and a secular state structure would properly function. Delivering a lecture at the Mohammed V University in capital Rabat, Vice President Ansari also spoke about India's deep-rooted association with Islam, and said that the objective of the country's constitution was to protect the rights of religious minorities. The Moroccan University also conferred an honorary degree on the Vice President. Later in the day, Vice President Ansari left for Morocco's imperial city and popular tourist destination Marrakesh. He was uh, received at the airport by Governor M. Mohamed Mufakir. The one incontrovertible fact about the Muslim experience in modern India is that its citizens professing the Islamic faith are citizens, consider themselves as such, are beneficiaries of the rights guaranteed to them by the Constitution, participate fully in the civic processes of the polity, and seek correctives for their grievances within the system. There is no inclination in their ranks to resort to ideologies and practices of violence. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi today released the country's first national disaster management plan. The national disaster management plan aims to make India disaster resilient and significantly reduce the loss of lives and assets. The plan is based on the four priority themes of the UN Sendai framework. The NDMP covers all phases of disaster management, in which include prevention, mitigation, response and recovery. The plans also spell out uh, the roles and responsibilities of all levels of government right down to the panchayat and urban local body levels. The plan has a regional approach which will uh, be beneficial not only for disaster management but also for development planning. The centre has uh, increased the minimum support price for PADI for the season 2016-17 uh, of the Kharif season. In a decision expected to boost output and check price rise as well, MSV for pulses has also been increased by up to 200, uh, 425 rupees per quintal for this year. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has approved a bonus of 425 rupees for pulses and 100 to 200 rupees per quintal for oilseed growers over and above the MSP. The decision is to encourage domestic production and check prices. MSP for paddy has also been increased by 60 rupees to 1,470 rupees per quintal for the 2016-17 Kharif season. Samarthal mulle badhane ke baad bhi, jo dalhan hai, us par 425 rupee ka bonus, aur tilhan par 100 rupee ka bonus, aur til par 200 rupee ka bonus, dene ka nishay kiya gaya hai, aur is tarah se arahar ke dal, में जो वृद्धि समर्थन मूल्य में हुई है वो 9.2 प्रतिशत मूंग में 7.7 प्रतिशत उरद में 8.1 प्रतिशत The cabinet has also given its approval to the postal payment banks the government will set up 650 postal bank branches by September 2017
to just announce that by September 2017, all the 650 branches of the postal payment bank will become operational. ये हम आपसे कहना चाहते हैं। ये कि बहुत ही बड़ा फैसला है, और इसके शुरू होने के बाद हमारा पोस्टल पेमेंट बैंक विल बिकम द लार्जेस्ट नेटवर्क ऑफ बैंक्स इन द वर्ल्ड। The cabinet also gave its nod to the Mao Tarighat new railway line project and gave ex facto approval to the proposal for Chennai Metro Phase One of nine kilometers. Vishal Daya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now the centre has promulgated for the third time an ordinance to amend a nearly 50-year-old law to guard against claims of succession or transfer of properties left by people who migrated to Pakistan and China after the wars. Called the enemy property, it refers to any property belonging to, held or managed on behalf of an enemy or an, an enemy subject or an enemy firm. The government has vested these properties in the custodian of enemy property for India, an office instituted under the central government. The Enemy Property Act was enacted in 1968 after the Indo-Pakistan War of 1965. In the Act, uh, the Act in fact regulates such properties and lists the custodian's powers. Now, President Pradam Mukherjee has approved the Enemy Property Amendment and Validation Third Ordinance 2016 for the third time, which will replace the second ordinance pending in the Rajya Sabha. Meanwhile, there's been an increase in fuel prices yet again. Petrol prices have been hiked by 2 rupees and 58 paise and will now cost 65 uh, rupees and 60 paise per litre, while diesel has become costlier by 2, uh, 2 rupees and 26 paise per litre, now costing 53.93 rupees for 1 litre. Fuel prices will last hike on the 17th of May. The Indian Oil Corporation said the current level of international product prices of petrol and diesel and rupee dollar exchange rate warranted the increase. Meanwhile, in a fourth straight monthly increase in rates, the price of aviation turbine fuel was hiked by a steep 9.2% in Delhi and by 9.4% in Mumbai. The price of non-subsidized LPG cylinders were also increased by 21 rupees to 548 rupees, the second monthly increase in rates. Now, India's GDP growth numbers might have brought cheer for the government as it starts with its third year in power, but the opposition is not amused. It claims that a lack of jobs and low investment reflect a different story. The Indian economy officially became a $2 trillion economy after it clocked 7.9% growth in the quarter four of the last fiscal. Improved farm output, notwithstanding two consecutive years of drought, better manufacturing, mining and electricity production all spurred the growth. And the government was quick to credit its coordinated action for the phenomenal growth. सब लोग सामूहिकता के आधार पर संबंधता के साथ अपने अपने मंत्रालय का प्रामाणिकता युक्त काम करते हैं उसको आगे बढ़ाने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं और जब सामूहिक रूप से इस तरह से प्रयत्न होता है तो स्वाभाविक है कि जीडीपी में बढ़ोतरी होगी। The opposition, however, is not impressed. While challenging the new methodology to tabulate GDP figures, the Congress party also slammed the government for high unemployment rates and a bleak investment climate. Go by the old method. Uh, in my opinion, as the, you know, the party also has said, it's around 5%. It can't be more than that. Okay, even if you inflate it 8%, 9%, but that should be reflected in the performance. See, GDP is only a number, but the indication is the, the quantity. The worrisome part in this growth story is that gross fixed capital formation, a proxy for investment, contracted 1.9% in quarter four. However, corporate India feels that latest GDP data will help Prime Minister Narendra Modi craft an impressive sales pitch. India has uh, become one of the fastest growing country in the world. 7.9 GDP is a encouraging number though it might as a, as a in case if you take it as a totality it may not be exactly the 7.9 but it's a very very encouraging and that so that gives the confidence to the um, uh, government as well as the investor and the industry saddled with idle capacity and stretched balance sheets private companies are shy to make new investments Festering bad loans, which have made banks wary of fresh lending, have also only worsened India's investment crisis. With a good rain forecast this year, hopes have risen for improved farm sector output to set the major economic engines chugging. Prithi Mishra, 
राज्यसभा टीवी Now, Rahul Gandhi's much talked uh, about and a long delayed elevation as Congress president is likely to happen in the next few weeks. According to party sources, the Congress vice president will be elevated to the top post in a major organized national shakeup in the coming weeks. The restructuring is likely to involve changes of several posts including general secretaries, secretaries, various heads of department and state PCC chiefs. Younger aspirants are expected to get key positions as the party seeks to revive itself following a series of poor results in the assembly elections. There has been a rising chorus in the party for bringing in change and making people more accountable. The Congress uh, Working Committee is expected to meet this month and take the decision. Congress President का फैसला। अगर वो चाहते हैं कि मैंने 20 साल कर लिया, मैं हैंडओवर करूं, तो it is her decision and I'm sure Rahul will do a good job. पूरा कार्यकर्ता ये बड़े दिनों से चाहता था कि राहुल जी जिस तरह से मेहनत कर रहे हैं कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए सड़क से लेकर संसद तक लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं तो निश्चित ही उनके नेतृत्व में और ताकत मिलेगी टुडे इन फैक्ट द सहजादा इट सीम्स इज गोइंग टू बी द क्राउन प्रिंस ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी द क्राउन प्रिंस ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी दिस इज वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डायनास्टिक पॉलिटिक्स द डायनास्टी इज मार्चिंग कांग्रेस का अंदरूनी मामला है कि वो किसको अध्यक्ष बनाए इसमें हमें कुछ नहीं कहना है लेकिन मैं समझता हूँ देश की जनता राहुल गांधी जी की कार्य क्षमता के बारे में परिचित है और कांग्रेस अपने आप में एक डूबता हुआ जहाज है टाइम फॉर टू टेक अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक लॉट्स मॉन द अदर साइड डू स्टेट यूथ Elora Caves, an unimaginable and detailed work of art, the finest example of rock cave temple in India, with 34 caves. Built by the rulers of the Rashtrakuta dynasty between 350 AD and 1000 AD, striking sculptures and murals are the hallmark of the caves. The Kailash Temple is the largest monolith structure of the world an impressive 15 feet statue of Buddha seated in two story structure of stupa with all the grace it took about 5 centuries to complete the structure made with 200000 tons of rock Welcome back you're watching the news tonight. Now Goa Chief Minister Lakshmi Kant Parsekar has created furor with his remark that people in his state are annoyed with the behavior of Africans particularly Nigerians living there. His remark comes in the backdrop of a complaint by a woman that a Nigerian national abducted and raped her at gunpoint last week. At a time when the central government is in a damage control mode following a spate of attacks on African nationals in India Goa Chief Minister Lakshmi Kant Parsekar has raked up a controversy. Parsekar said people in Goa are angry with Nigerians because of their different attitude. We get people from all other countries, but in general, the people of Goa are uh, very much annoyed with their behavior, with their attitude, with their way of life. On many occasions, I hear complaint against Nigerians. Parsekar's remark came in response to a recent incident in Goa, where a Nigerian national allegedly raped a 31-year-old woman after kidnapping her at gunpoint. Parsekar, however, invited a lot of criticism both from the opposition as well as the African community in India. First journal V K Singh, now Goa Chief Minister, uh, belonging to Bharatiya Janata Party. are passing disparaging remarks against people from african continent and african nations including nigeria don't they realize that we have a historical relationship with the entire african continent including the freedom struggle which mahatma gandhi led in south africa the manner and fashion in which we are humiliating tourists as also particularly people from african nations speaks volumes about the racist attitude of bjp leaders it's not uh, all african people is bad mm. no mm. there is some people has a bad behavior mm. so if one one person has done something wrong mm. don't uh, mix 
all people to be wrong. Mm. That is a very, very shame. Earlier, Goa's tourism minister Dilip Parulekar had also demanded a new law to facilitate quick deportation of the Nigerian nationals. He claimed that in order to extend their stay in India, Nigerians get embroiled in criminal cases on purpose. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti filed her nomination papers today for the bipole to the Anant Nag Assembly segment. She is seeking to become a member of the state legislature within the mandatory period of six months from her swearing in as Chief Minister. Currently, she is a Lok Sabha member from Anant Nag. The bipole was necessitated after the death of her father, Mufti Muhammad Sayed, on the 7th of January this year. After filing her nomination papers, Mehbooba voiced hope that the people will repose faith and elect her so she can continue the work she started. मुझे उम्मीद है अनंतनाग के लोग जिस तरह उन्होंने मुफ्ती मोहम्मद सईद साहब पे भरोसा किया यकीन किया उनको एक मौका दिया और उनको वजीर आला की कुर्सी तक पहुंचाया मुझे उम्मीद है कि यहां के लोग मुफ्ती साहब के भरोसे के ऊपर भरोसा करते हुए मुझे कामयाब करेंगे और मुझे मौका देंगे जो काम मुफ्ती साहब ने अधूरा छोड़ा है उसको मैं पाए तकमील तक पहुंचा सकूं सम ऑन नेशनल न्यूज़ अपडेट्स नाउ नेशन वाइड The death toll in the Pulgar fire mishap rose to 19 as three more bodies were recovered from the site. The identities of the deceased are yet to be established. A in fact, a massive fire broke out early in the hours of Tuesday morning at the Central Ammunition Depot at Pulgar in Maharashtra. The army has instituted an inquiry into the incident. The Jammu and Kashmir government today put on hold the implementation of various proposals made in the budget for 2016-17 after opposition leader Omar Abdullah's objections. Omar questioned how the government could implement the proposals without the Assembly's approval. Congress and BJP members also opposed the move. Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonawal and 124 other newly elected members of the 14th Assam Assembly today took oath as members of the House. BJP MLA Ranjit Das was elected Speaker unopposed. Oath to the new legislators was admitted by Pro Tem Speaker Fani Bhushan Chaudhary, AGP MLA from Bonigao. The three day session beginning today will be addressed by the Governor on Thursday. Admission to Delhi University 60,000 seats open today. The entire process will be conducted online for the first time. According to DU officials, the online registration process will continue till the 19th of June. The first cutoff list marks which students need to be eligible for admission to a college will be announced on the 27th of June. Fire officials on Wednesday were still trying to douse the flames a day after a major fire broke out in the Adharwadi dumping yard in Mumbai's Kalyan area. More than 14 fire engines and 12 water tankers were pressed into service. Meanwhile, more than 2,000 people were moved to safer places as smoke and smog filled the area. Some international news now, and the United States has called for improvement in bilateral ties between India and Pakistan in order to boost peace between the two countries. Expressing concern that a conventional conflict between India and Pakistan could escalate to include nuclear use, the U.S. asked both countries to engage in a sustained bilateral dialogue process and exercise maximum restraint. Last month, both countries engaged in a war of words after Pakistan's nuclear scientist Dr. A.Q. Khan said that Islamabad had the ability to target New Delhi in five minutes. India retorted, saying it was capable of targeting the whole of Pakistan. Now, Iraqi forces thrust into the northern outskirts of Fallujah city on Wednesday as part of their continued assault to retake the city from the Islamic State and help protect capital Baghdad from suicide bombings. Meanwhile, UNICEF has warned of a potential humanitarian disaster in Fallujah, estimating that 20,000 children are still trapped inside the city. The battle for Fallujah has intensified, with Iraqi government forces continuing their advance towards the center of the city despite the tough resistance put up by the Islamic State. Footage from the Islamic State-controlled city shows a fierce gun battle underway between the Iraqi soldiers and the Islamist military. According to reports, as many as 106 militants have been killed in the latest clashes. On Tuesday, Shiite militias advanced into Saklavia district on the northern outskirts of Fallujah a day after a thrust by the Iraqi army under U.S. air support. 
The portion to Nuaimia, a sprawling agricultural area in the south, was the first attempt by Iraqi forces to enter Fallujah. In a statement, the UNICEF has issued a stark warning to the battling sides to spare the children. The statement also warned that children run the risk of being forced to fight alongside the terror group. An estimated 20,000 children are trapped inside the city along with their families. Around 554 families have been able to escape since the 21st of May, but up to 50,000 people are still thought to be stuck up inside the city. The Iraqi army's assault on Fallujah has begun in what is expected to be one of the biggest battles ever fought against the Islamic State. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Samoa International News now and Global Buzz. French investigators today confirmed that signals have been detected from one of the black boxes of the Egypt airplane that crashed last month. There were 66 people on board when the Airbus A320 crashed on the 19th of May while fi uh, flying from Paris to Cairo. It vanished from uh, Greek and Egyptian radar screens apparently without having sent a distress call. Residents of small towns across central France were forced to evacuate their homes after heavy rains caused flooding in the region. Residents of the Chalet Soulon and Montagre were confined to their homes. They were forced to take shelter in the upper floors after the river Loin burst its banks and flooded the surrounding towns. The International Crimes Tribunal in Bangladesh today sentenced one person to death and another two to life imprisonment for crimes against humanity during the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. The tribunal said the trial had taken a stand against Bangladesh's struggle for independence and joined the Razakar militia raised by the Pakistani army. In Thailand, 40 tiger cub bodies have been found in a freezer at a Buddhist temple accused of wildlife trafficking and animal abuse. Police and wildlife officials started an operation on Monday to remove all living tigers at the temple. Pictures posted to social media showed 40 cub corpses lined up on the floor. The site is a popular tourist attraction but has been closed to the public since the raid. The world's longest and deepest rail tunnel officially opened in Switzerland today after almost two decades of construction work. The 57-kilometer twin bore Gotthard base tunnel will provide a high-speed rail link under the Swiss Alps between North and Southern Europe. The tunnel has overtaken Japan's 53.9-kilometer Seikan rail tunnel as the longest in the world and pushed the 50.5-kilometer channel tunnel linking the UK and France into third place. Time now for all the sports action and sports beat. The mixed doubles pair of Sanya Mirza and Ivan Dodic have advanced to the quarterfinals of the French Open. The top seed pair defeated French pair of Alize Cornet and Jonathan Ezurek 6-7, 6-4, 10-8. Meanwhile, India's challenge in the men's doubles event came to an end after Leanne de Pace and Rohan Bopanna lost their respective quarterfinal matches. The tournament schedule for the ICC Champions Trophy 2017 was announced in England today. A total of 15 matches, including three knockout games, will be played from the 1st of June to the 18th of June 2017. Hosts England will face Bangladesh in the opener at the Oval. India will launch its title defence against traditional rival Pakistan on the 4th of June uh, 2017 at Ed Batchston. Indian women's pair, doubles pair of Joala Gutta and Ashwini Ponapa have advanced to the second round of the Indonesia Open badminton tournament. The duo defeated Indonesian pair of Febriana and uh, Ribika in a tough three setter. The men's doubles team of Manuatri and B. Sumit Reddy also progressed to the second round. The Indian Boxing Federation is likely to appeal for a wild card for Mericom after she failed to qualify for the Rio Olympics. Mericom lost the qualifying event of the World Boxing Championships last month. She was the first Indian woman to win an Olympic boxing medal when she clinched bronze at the 2012 London Games. 
In a landmark decision, the International Boxing Association today allowed professional boxers to compete at the upcoming Rio Olympic Games. In a vote of member federations, 88 members voted in favour of the move, while none voted against and four abstained. The decision is, however, unlikely to see boxing's biggest names enter the Olympic ring in Rio. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.